a lot of you have been texting as well, by the way, on um, texting in particular, uh, on why the Speaker didn't allow Diane Abbott to have her say in the House of Commons on whatever it, it was she wished to have her say on. She uh, was standing up um, a number of times to try to get the Speaker's attention to say something, but didn't have a chance to put a question. Let's talk to Natasha Clark about that and a couple of other things as well, LBC's political editor who joins us from Westminster. Um, Natasha, what, what are the norms and rules around which MPs get to ask a question and why in the House of Commons on PM Tuesday? Sheila, good afternoon. Yes, um, there are rules around which MPs get called for, for speaker by the Speaker uh, to say a question in Prime Minister's questions. Now, they are sometimes already picked. Uh, a number of them are picked beforehand. They're listed on what's called the order paper of the House of Commons in advance. So we have a list and it can be accessed online. So you can have a look and see if your MP has one. So there will be a list of MPs every week that we know are going to ask questions to the Prime Minister. And they're done on a rotating basis um, based on party. So it's obviously the bigger parties will get more questions and obviously the government uh, as the biggest party will get the most questions and you get lots from backbenchers and frontbenchers as well. They try to, um, uh, sorry, shadow frontbenchers, I should say, in terms of trying to get a spread. And obviously you see Stephen Flynn, the Westminster uh, SNP leader, he gets a question every time. Uh, the formula is that Keir Starmer, as the leader of the opposition, gets those six questions mm. uh, every time. But yes, there is rightly anger growing from Labour MPs this afternoon about why the Speaker, given that Diane Abbott was bobbing up and down to try and get uh, a question in. If there was time, you would have expected the Speaker, given that this row has completely dominated politics for the past 48 hours, and it really did dominate Prime Minister's questions today, mm -hmm. you might have expected the Speaker of the House of Commons to call her to her feet, to have her say. And instead, what it looks like now is a very poor look. Lots and lots of people in the House of Commons, lots of them men, lots of them white men as well, talking about a woman and then not have, let, letting her have her say. Now, I've put those accusations to the Speaker's office. They've given a statement today saying during Prime Minister's questions, the Speaker must select MPs from either side of the House on an alternating basis for fairness. This takes place within a limited time frame with the Chair prioritising members who were already listed on the order paper. This week, as is often the case, there was not enough time to call all members who wanted to ask a question. I'm, I'm just, I'm not sure about you, Sheila, but to me it doesn't wash. It doesn't look like a good look from the Speaker of the House of Commons. And we know he's already under pressure from that debacle that happened just a few weeks ago. He's already been seen to have made the wrong decisions when he allowed Labour to put down their own motion on Gaza, causing that utter chaos a few weeks ago. And now I think he's going to be, rightly, criticised by MPs across the party, um, the Labour Party that is, for not letting Diane Ab have her say on a week where this really should have been about her response and how she feels about this situation, bearing in mind we've heard from everybody else in the Conservative Party, the Prime Minister and the leader of the Labour Party, but we haven't heard much from her. Yeah, it'll be interesting to know. I mean, I, I don't know whether she'll share how she feels about it, but it'll be interesting to know whether she how she felt sitting there being spoken about, uh, and, you know, in, in, in that way throughout proceedings and then not being given a chance to speak herself. Again, not necessarily on that issue. She might have had a constituency question she wanted to ask. But, yeah, it feels a bit jarring, doesn't it? Yeah, she may have done. Um, but, yes, already some Labour MPs, including Stella Creasy, um, has said... Uh, has sort of expressed their dismay at the fact that, that she was not allowed uh, in, in, in their eyes to have her say and to call her question. This is a woman who's just had a very public death threat uh, in, you know, we've just been discussing this in Westminster for the past 48 hours. It's been a very grim fight, according to David Lammy, the shadow foreign secretary. And it really does seem to be a case from the speaker that they're just going, well, we've run out of time. It doesn't seem to be a fantastic uh, answer. And for Rishi Sunak, the questions are going to keep mounting up about this Tory donor. In the last hour or so, we've also had a statement from the Scottish Conservatives calling on the Prime Minister uh, and calling on the, uh, the Conservative Party in Westminster to give back that money that they accepted from Frank Hester. A Scottish Conservative spokesperson said, these comments were racist and wrong. The Scottish Conservative Party has never accepted a donation from Frank Hester and the UK Conservative Party should carefully review the donation it has received from Hester in response to his remarks. Now, so far, the Prime Minister and the Conservative Party down here in Westminster are resisting those calls, but I think they will continue to be under pressure for the next few days about why they feel it is acceptable to take £10 million from a donor who the Prime Minister himself has now accepted, has made very, very racist comments. 
And, you know, we played a clip of Kevin um, Hollingrake this morning, uh, that he was speaking with Tom Swarbrick this morning on LBC. But in another interview, he was asked plainly, if you were offered another 10 million as a party, would you, should you take it? And he said, yes, plain and simple. Yes, we should. So maybe it's yes, all about money the in the end. Answer. Yeah, <laughs> yes. It feels like the wrong answer. I, you know, the Conservatives are going to keep getting questions on this. It's going to continue to pile up until, uh, you know, basically I think they are very much hoping that this conversation is going to die down at some point and the media are going to stop asking questions, stop this speculation. But there is very real anger out there and these comments are not something just to be brushed under the carpet and they come from such a major Tory donor as well. I think this row is just going to continue to rumble on and questions will now start to be asked about other Conservative donors and whether they have made uh, other inappropriate remarks and about whether it is okay to accept someone's apology if they make racist remarks. Is it now okay to just forgive them and to sweep everything under the carpet if they say that they're sorry because that's what the Prime Minister is insinuating that he is prepared to do. Um, I just don't think it's going to wash with many of the British public. And given that speech two Fridays ago outside Downing Street, given what we're going to get tomorrow on extremism and given because of what's going on in the Middle East, the focus on Islamophobia and anti-Semitism, had a donor said, let's focus on anti-Semitism, had a donor said, you know, that Jewish, that Jewish person uh, makes me want to hate all Jews. Rishi Sunak would have had an immediately different response to it. You just know that he would because of the climate, yeah. you know, that we're in. Exactly. And I'm surprised that the Prime Minister at Prime Minister's Questions today decided not to talk about anti-Semitism, but decided to lash out at Angela Rayner, the deputy leader, um, for calling Tories scum. Of course, mm. it is an unacceptable comment to make. But by conflating those two issues, the issue of it's racism the and the issue of, of an insult, those two things are completely not the same. It would have been fair game for him to talk about um, anti-Jewish hatred, but instead he decided um, to, to talk about something else in an idea to try and, uh, you know, have a crack at Angela Rayner. And I, I don't think that was really fitting with the tone of what we've seen in the House of Commons uh, and generally in Westminster over the last 48 hours.